if the people kept silent, even the stones would cry out in praise. So said Jesus, as recorded in Luke's Gospel, when he arrived in Jerusalem. We've celebrated Easter for a couple of weeks and we're skipping back now to carry on our studies in Luke's Gospel to see those particular elements which Luke records and that the other Gospel writers do not. So a very good morning to you as we are gathered online for this uh, service of worship. The main part of the passage that we'll be looking at this morning in the arrival in Jerusalem is when Jesus laments. He grieves over the fact that the people of Jerusalem at the time could not recognise that God was visiting them. God was coming to them to achieve God's purposes. Sometimes that can be the case for us too. We simply don't have the eyes to see, we fail to recognise through our own blinkeredness or, or our own weakness uh, where God is working, where God is active. So let's come before God, the risen Jesus, knowing that he understands our weakness and is ready to help us to see differently, to see with his resurrected eyes. So follow me and join in in the words in bold type as we pray this prayer of confession that's on the screen now. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone, and doubted our eternal home. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from all your sins. May God heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we can rejoice in God's acceptance of us and God's forgiveness. And so let us shout out in praise, offer to God the depth of our praise uh, so that the stones don't have to burst into song on our behalf.
Our reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 19 and I will be starting to read at verse 39. Some of the Pharisees and the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognise the time of God's coming to you. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Today in Luke's distinctive gospel, we return to Palm Sunday and recall an event unique to Luke. We'll take a bit of a journey through some scriptures to identify and explore a possible reason for Jesus's extreme reaction as he enters Jerusalem. The city he has been approaching for 10 chapters of Luke's narrative. Now here a quote. On the 8th of the Jewish month of Ab, in late July AD 70, Titus, the Roman Emperor Vespasian's son, who was in command of the four-month siege of Jerusalem, ordered his entire army to prepare to storm the temple at dawn. The next day happened to be the very day on which the Babylonians had destroyed Jerusalem over 500 years before. So begins the prologue of Simon Sebag Montefiore's biography of the city of Jerusalem that is named as part of the city of peace, Salem. We see that highlighted in Hebrews 7 when the writer to the Hebrews is describing the priest Melchizedek. It is a story, the biography of this city, the conquest as a city passed from nation to nation, army to army, religion to religion, such that if you visit Jerusalem today, there are four quarters, a Christian quarter, a Jewish quarter, a Muslim quarter, and an Armenian quarter. It sits on a rock between two valleys. It is where Solomon built his temple. It is where God dwelt amongst his chosen people. It was the only place that God could be approached by the high priest in ancient days, once a year. It was a centre for his chosen people. It was special. Benjamin Disraeli said of Jerusalem, the view of Jerusalem is the history of the world. It is more, it is the history of heaven and earth. Jerusalem was the city of David who chose it to unite the kingdoms. It was the place Jesus now entered to make his final sacrifice and the city in which he would be found again as the resurrected Messiah through whom victory will be won and eternal life made possible. In the new creation, a new Jerusalem will be a sign of the kingdom of God with living waters flowing in the streets and the crystal sea removed and the tree restored that was violated in the garden. Jerusalem matters. Jesus is greeted by the cheering crowds on his most triumphant of days, and they recognise the significance of the careful staging of the entry of the king. And we have, of course, here gone back in Luke's story to Palm Sunday. The crowds have been proclaiming the one who comes in the name of the Lord, and he is blessed. But the ruling authorities, the religious leaders, complain. They are disturbed. How dare he make such a claim? Tell your followers to be quiet, they say. Jesus responds that even the inanimate objects of creation will lift their voices to proclaim him king. 
The joyful story turned sour very quickly. We've seen his journey from the east. He traveled through Bethany and Bethpage to the Mount of Olives opposite Jerusalem. Jesus goes down into the valley and now he approaches her gates and he weeps. He had wept before, John tells us in his gospel, that famous line, Jesus wept. But that word in Greek means to shed a tear. This word here means to wail, to cry out in anguish, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Jesus feels tremendous pain because Jerusalem, signified by these leaders of the Jews, the chosen people, does not recognise what or who is before their eyes, their Messiah, their Saviour, their God. Ten times he accuses them, you, I tell you, you, even you, the day would bring you peace, days upon you, against you, encircle you, hem you in, dash you, you and the children, because you did not recognise I came to you. These are the words of the wounded and the frustrated. You should have known better. You have a special place. You have failed me. And you will see destruction just as your ancestors saw when exiled. Have you heard the phrase, hindsight has 2020 vision? It's easy to look back and be critical of Israel. They had their place in the six act play, which is God's story, which is told in scripture. And all that follows uh, from here, I give thanks to Chris Wright, whose book, The Mission of God, covers what we cover here. So the first act is creation. The second act is the fall, the rebellion against God. The third act, the promise to Abraham and Abraham and the election of Israel. The fourth act is Jesus. The fifth act, us now, is the church. And the final act, Act 6, will be the new creation. So what was Israel's mission? Genesis 12 begins the story with Abraham and God's promise. All peoples on the earth will be blessed through you, Abraham was told by God. As Paul shared with the Galatians, in chapter 3. Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles, the non-Jews, by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. The gospel given to Abraham, then named Abraham, is that all nations will be blessed. Yahweh, the God of Israel, is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And they, the Israelites, were chosen. They were elect. But they were not elect because they were special, but because they were loved and chosen for the purpose of God's mission, that all nations should be blessed. God reminded them frequently in the words of Deuteronomy. Understand then that it is not because of your righteousness that the Lord your God is giving you this good land to possess, for you are a stiff-necked people, we read in Deuteronomy 9. Election was not for Israel. Israel was for the world. Their initial call was to be the people of God, as witnesses to preserve the knowledge of the living God, to be, not yet to go. That was yet to come. The prophets redirected this call. Isaiah chapter 43 to chapter 55 talks about the servant that would bring salvation to the nations. They were to receive him. 
They were to serve and receive the suffering servant who would come to take away all the transgressions of mankind and Israel themselves were to serve God. It was in their scriptures. And as we heard last week, the men on the Emmaus Road needed Jesus to open the scriptures to them. Later, Jesus opened the minds of the disciples to understand the scriptures at the end of Luke's gospel, chapter 24. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Just because we've read it doesn't mean we've understood it. The Spirit reveals the truth to us through the Holy Scriptures. They, the disciples, were told they were to be witnesses just as Israel was to witness to Yahweh. The final piece of this jigsaw is for Israel was to be distinctive. Leviticus this time, Leviticus 19, speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. But Israel was just not just to be holy, to, but to be seen to be holy and distinctive. Deuteronomy 4 this time. See, I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may follow them in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about all these decrees and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Moses's words here, piecing together the reason for the law given on the mountain in the wilderness to the Israelites, as they were on the verge of entering the God's promised land, this is how to be holy. This is how to be godly. Do this and others will see. God prepared them for such a treasure and a task. On that mountain, before Moses ascended to meet with Yahweh, he was instructed, we see in Exodus 19, you yourself have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. And Moses did. The ancient priest stood between God and the people. The priestly nation... Israel stood between the nations and God. They were to bring the nations to Yahweh, who would bless the nations. That was their mission. The priests stood for Israel, and Israel stood for the world. The law was given to show how to live holy lives set apart from God, and as witnesses of God to the nations, God's law, not man-made law. The Old Testament scriptures are full of references to the nation seeing what Israel did, witnessing to Israel, good and bad. God's plan is for all nations to be brought into his kingdom, grafted into Israel where Zion will be a community of all nations, unified under one God and one Saviour. And they, Israel, were to receive him who was sent by the Father. So what now? Act 3 is over, Israel. Act 4 is completed, Jesus. Act 5 is where we are, the church, fired by the Holy Spirit, 
taking on that supporting role and it starts with a recurring theme if we look to philippians have the same mindset as christ jesus who being in very nature god did not consider equality with god something to be used to his own advantage rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at that name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every tongue, every knee, every nation. And our part? Well, here are three New Testament scriptures. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Acts 1.8 All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And finally, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Peter's words in 1 Peter 2.9 to the church. These are New Testament sayings from our scriptures to the church. In Act 5, we have received the baton. So how is that 2020 hindsight? If the church is the new Israel taking on the mantle, how are we doing? Chris Wright summarises his talk into four main areas. Monotheistic. Do we believe in one holy God? We may well be doing okay so far. Election. Are we receiving the gifts of faith? But are we receiving them to bless others? ethics are we obeying his ways to be holy so that we are distinctive to the nations and finally eschatological the end times are we pointing to a new heaven and a new earth a hope that there is no more greek or jew slave or free, just one in Christ Jesus. When Jesus turns to those who should receive him now, how are we doing? Will he smile? Will he weep? Or will he even wail for what he has given up that we might live? And whichever honest answer we can give, what are we going to do it about it today? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your scriptures that are whole and complete. From Genesis to Revelation. And we thank you for the part that you give us in this six act play. Help us not to look back at those who have tried and failed or not even tried very hard have wandered from the way that you have given them instead to learn from them to recognize our joint humanity with them and to seek your will and your ways 
and to do your mission in the world to bring the nations to you that they will be blessed in jesus mighty name we pray amen having heard god's word we now affirm our faith in the words of the creed we say this together i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ his son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again he ascended into heaven he is seated at the right hand of the father and he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen morning christchurch let's pray psalm 96 says ascribe to the lord all you families of nations ascribe to the lord glory and strength ascribe to the lord the glory due his name bring an offering and come into his courts worship the lord in the splendor of his holiness tremble before him all the earth say among the nations the lord reigns father god we do indeed worship you this morning with fear and trembling for you are an awesome and holy god you hold the universe in your hands and yet you know each of us by name you know when we sit and when we rise you perceive our thoughts from afar you know our going out and lying down and are familiar with all our ways we praise you lord but now search our hearts and know our anxious minds show us if there is any offensive way in us and lead us in the way everlasting lord in your mercy hear our prayer lord jesus we lift up to you the nations of our world in conflict and turmoil and ask for mercy we pray for syria yemen afghanistan ethiopia mozambique myanmar and ukraine may your hand be upon these places and bring them peace may there be repentance and a turning away from violence lord in your mercy hear our prayer and we also pray for our brothers and sisters in christ who are suffering persecution in so many countries we pray that you will fill them with the power of the holy spirit who raised jesus from the grave give them courage and boldness to remain faithful and be witnesses to your love and help them forgive their persecutors lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for christian organizations who are bringing hope and healing to many in distress both here and abroad we pray for tear fund as they enable and facilitate numerous projects run by local churches and faith groups we also pray for the bible society as they work to translate and bring your precious word to the vast number of people who don't yet know you and we pray for anne foley as she works as country D director for medair in yemen we pray for her and her team's safety as they live and work in such a dangerous place we also pray for any other overseas missionary groups or societies that we may support individually. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we have seen from the Lent Prayer Diary, there are many organisations and groups who are giving hope and support to many in this country. 
We pray for Jill and Peter Boyd in Luton, and we praise you that they have moved Oasis to a new building and have had the finances to refurbish and equip it. We pray for safety and guidance as they open it up gradually to ladies who are in need of support as and when restrictions lift. We pray for Ascension Trust as they mobilise Christians in a variety of projects to help improve the quality of life for the disadvantaged and vulnerable. We pray for more volunteers to become street pastors and school pastors and we pray for their work amongst young people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we are thankful for the amazing speed of the vaccine rollout. But as our country starts to emerge from the second lockdown, we pray for people to be sensible and careful. We pray particularly for the vulnerable, that the vaccines will be effective for them, even with new strains of the virus. May each of us be vigilant about social distancing and hygiene and not get carried away with a bit of freedom. Help us not to forget hands, face and space. We continue to pray for those in our fellowship who have lost loved ones in the last year and pray that your love will fill that void and ache within their hearts. Father, you know what it's like to see your only son die. And Jesus, you know the agony of complete separation from your father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We look forward to our church reopening for services, albeit for limited numbers. We pray for Doug, Lisa, Jude, Charlotte and Chuck as they lead our church forward. We pray for the office staff, the church wardens, ministry leaders and house group leaders and for all those who enable online and Zoom services to go ahead. We have much to be thankful for, but we pray that as a fellowship we are supportive and encouraging of each other and have faith and courage to reach out to our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger for ever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. And as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Thank you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we will have uh, Holy Communion using Prayer E. The Lord is here. His Spirit, His Spirit is, is with us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. 
He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you. He gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And now as our Saviour taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Now we say the prayer as we come to the table. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. 
Now the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.